the point is we have for the first time in the history of the humanity of a, a system of storing and transferring value that cannot be controlled by anyone is very transparent very easy to use very easy to understand once you get it and then it's free basically the technology is free because if you look a little bit back the first implementation of uh, of blockchain was bitcoin hi and welcome i'm sebastian and uh, today we're going to talk about bitcoin blockchain money and a lot of other interesting things today with me i have antonio aram who's uh, the co-founder and CEO of Netopia. Netopia has processed already uh, the payments for merchants and uh, websites uh, in a total of $2 billion so far. Am I right, Antonio? Uh, and uh, yep. they're, they're, as a company and Antonio as a person, are very keen on uh, exploring cryptocurrencies and... Uh, to say it honestly, a long time Bitcoin fan. So uh, although the, the show right now, it's not supposed to be a, a fanboy talk about uh, blockchain and Bitcoin, uh, I, I think we're gonna evade that by, by talking about uh, more interesting things and more important things such as money, why money was the difference between sound money, hard money, uh, what's the difference between uh, uh, marginal utility and store of value and uh, medium of exchange. But before going to that, um, I'm happy that I have Antonio today with me and uh, I would like to let him say a few words about himself and uh, maybe the company that he's running. And uh, then we'll, we'll start with the heavy stuff. So Antonio, welcome. Hello, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sevi. Thank you, everybody. It's great uh, to have you all here. So I'm not, I, well, I'm a little. I'm not such a big fan of not not a big user of Clubhouse because I only have an iPad, so it's a little bit hard oh, perfect. to make these things uh, work. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Yes, crypto and especially Bitcoin was on my list since uh, a lot of time ago now since uh, it was seen as a, you know, a joke or it still is for some, which kind of pissed me off. Um, yeah, indeed, we did, we did a lot of things related to crypto and face payments here in Romania. We tried to push it on the mainstream with some level of success. We saw some drawbacks as well, but um, we are confident that in the future, uh, you know, the crypto currencies and the blockchain technology will prevail and will have a major impact, not only on the financial side, but uh, on the technology side as well. So we have today uh, something, we try something new in terms of uh, technical uh, challenges. We try to stream on three platforms and that is Facebook, YouTube, and of course Clubhouse, the new kid on the block. And um, now let's see, uh, the, the title of this session is actually uh, related to money. So Bitcoin explained, but, uh, but uh, how, how is it related uh, to money and why is this important? So I would like to start by offering a bit of a context uh, a bit of uh, history of money, if you will. And um, I would like to ask you, Antonio, also uh, uh, to, to add more things if I uh, miss something. So what does it, what, what are money? Money are basically a social convention. Uh, the paper that they are printed on, it's really worthless unless we give it value. So this is in a nutshell what money are, a medium of exchange. They could be a medium of, uh, of exchange so that we don't uh, use um, barter 
because it would be almost impossible for us. And also, in order not to, uh, to become good at everything, we should be specialized. And that's something that's uh, actually made the world uh, go around for a while now. Uh, if we do things uh, specialized, then we're going to be more successful and uh, we're going to be more productive. So that's why we, for instance, could build uh, shoes and then sell the shoes and buy something to eat instead of uh, growing our food and uh, building our shoes and our houses and so on. Um, now, money, of course, uh, uh, came a few thousand years ago. And uh, I want to know, Antonio, what are your stories on money? What's, uh, what's your opinion on, on this? And what do you know about the history of money? Well, as you said, uh, the, the money is a convention, okay? Anything, and, and, and the reason we invented money is to um, agree upon a value and that value can be used in different transactions. I mean, this is basic economy. Now, if you had like two sheep and I had uh, like a, a horse, you can say, okay, I give you these two sheep, you give me the horse and then you take the horse and you can you know exchange it for i don't know to one ton of fish or whatever or a grain or whatever so the whole concept was let's define something that it can be uh, as big or as, as small as we want and this can and then do all the reference of some um, you know product services goods you name it to this value so the whole point is we created a convention and this convention was, is what we call now money. Of course, at the beginning were, you know, a fish, uh, uh, no, uh, shells from, uh, on, if you are on the seaside or uh, different type of rocks, if you are on the mountains, on the mountain, but eventually everybody was uh, imposing something that was a little bit scarce, a little bit hard to mine, and that was gold and, and, and then silver. So we did refer to gold and silver as a, a medium of exchange, right? Uh, but this, those, those, those references are now gone because at this moment we are not referring to uh, gold anymore. You're uh, talking the about the, Bitcoin, the, the gold standard that was abandoned in 1971 in the US, probably? Well, it, it, it was not exactly abandoned. It was, uh, <laughs> it was more like an abrupt uh, disposal on it. <laughs> and uh, if, you look on the, if you look on the economical side, you see that since that moment, uh, you know, the whole kind of world kind of started to uh, move forward on a, on a faster pace uh, because there were a lot of money uh, that can finance, finance things. But those money were just, uh, you know, something uh, that were uh, enforced by US. At that time, US was a very, was the biggest economical power in the world. So, you had, they dropped this reference to the gold. And then by doing that, they created this system of credit and debt in the same time. And then, then this is what really drove the, the world uh, forward with a faster pace than everything that it was till then. But on the other hand, it created, a, a, it backfired because it created an, a system that is running on credit, is running on debt. The inflation is running on inflation. And then uh, if you, if you, and this is something that is very sad in a way, if you combine this with the fact that 99% of the world's population is financially illiterate, uh, then you can basically control the whole economical system right and that leads me to uh, actually trying to explain some of the flows of money uh, before that i wanted just to add a short crash course in uh, economics that 
uh, celery comes from salt, so people actually used not only seashells but salt as a form of payment, and that underlines the fact that uh, money are just a convention. Uh, coming back to what you were just saying, in the, there's this uh, feature of money that is very, very important. There are actually several features of money that are very important in order for the economy to thrive. And one is that it should be divisible, so you may actually buy small pieces of stuff with it. It should be uh, very, um, very space, uh, not space dependent, so they should be used here in Europe and uh, uh, overseas too in the US and so on. And then they should, they should last uh, in time. And that's where uh, the flaws come in. So there's a, there's a flaw on uh, the, the actual fiat system of money uh, because with time, you know, we have this uh, inflationary uh, problem, uh, especially in the US nowadays. So uh, that's the, the end of the short crash course in, in economics and why and how money should behave and why we have them. Uh, now, what happens and why we have a problem right now is because, um, as I just mentioned, the central banks and maybe the, the, the governments are actually imposing uh, the printing of money, endless printing of money in order to... Um, Create wealth, that's at least the, the point of it, but actually what happens is create uh, debt. Now, I would like to move uh, on, Antonio, to uh, Bitcoin and what is Bitcoin and why, did, uh, why, why is Bitcoin so important, except the fact that it's uh, just past $60,000, which is not really relevant in our discussion right now. Uh, why is it Bitcoin important as a technology? Uh, and uh, I would like just to highlight a few of uh, the characteristics of Bitcoin. So it's a computer program, it's a software that solves the problem of trust and double spending in digital currencies. It's a form of e-cash, of electronic cash, a payment uh, form that is um, enabling uh, people to transact uh, value without the problem of double spending. And uh, Antonio, what's, uh, maybe you may find a more simple uh, description for Bitcoin. I think, well, I think it's uh, the simplest convention, the simplest way of saying something about Bitcoin is uh, you have um, a technology, a piece of technology that kind of overcome every flaws that we have in the financial and um, monetary, basically monetary system at this moment. It's future proof, it's temper proof, it's inflation proof. Uh, and despite the fact that we don't know who the heck created it, uh, this technology, it really doesn't care. <laughs> you know, it really doesn't matter. So the point is, we have for the first time in the history of the humanity, of a system of storing and transferring value that cannot be controlled by anyone is very transparent, very easy to use, very easy to understand once you get it. And then it's free, basically, the technology is free, because if you look a little bit back, the first implementation of, uh, of blockchain was Bitcoin, but then some people just took the, the technology and then they created thousands and thousands of new uh, currencies and new uh, blockchains and variations. And it, it is a boom in, in intellectual input in this kind of, uh, of technology. So we have a system of value that is very easy to use and to understand. And does it replace the current monetary system? I, well, obviously not. Is there a potential to, to, um, uh, ob you know, to go over it and become the standard? Yes, it can. Uh, however, I think I cannot pinpoint 
which is the truth and I cannot pinpoint which is the, the, the time frame of when this will happen. But you have to look back a little bit in time and you see 10 years ago, Bitcoin and blockchain was launched. Today, we are talking about thousands of currencies um, created. We are talking about a value, a market valuation of trillions. We are talking about new technology, new business uh, lines. And basically we are having, we are staying in the middle of a revolution that is currently changing basically everything that we know. And, you know, I want to say something uh, a little bit sad. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by the fact that, you know, a lot of people that present themselves as being intellectuals or, you know, they have knowledge and they, 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 uh, in this financial monetary sector, they just don't understand. And not only they don't understand, but they are trying to explain how this beautiful technology is a hoax and how Bitcoin is a scam or whatever. You know what? It's, it's, it's sad that you can not... Um, Convince, maybe? <laughs> no, you, you, it's not about convincing. I'm trying to find my right one because I, I really don't want to, you know, point fingers to sure, anyone. Sure, but that's in the adoption uh, curve. There's normal, it, it's a normal step to, uh, in, you know, in the diffusion it, and it innovation. Is, it is. It, it we, is. I think we are at that point yet. Yeah, we are it, not there yet. That's that's true. But, you know, the rule number one in, in, in showing that you're intelligent is basically to be curious. Okay. So how come if, 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 for example, me and I, I presume a lot of the guys and girls that are listening to us and are watching us, if they don't understand something, you just, you know, you, you ask, you, you try to figure it out. You try to understand you by asking, you know, people or well, reading that's, or that's why I'm happy that we have the chance today to maybe uh, explain it a little better. And I would like to, uh, make an, a short uh, presentation on hard money and sound money. Uh, sound money, we just uh, talked about what what they are. They are um, usable anywhere. That's at least from the Austrian economics uh, definition that mm -hmm. they're usable anywhere, uh, everywhere, and uh, they're usable uh, in time. They pass the test of time. In 10 years from now, I should be able to buy the same thing with the same amount of money. And they are divisible, so you can actually buy small pieces of stuff or big, uh, big things. And uh, th these are the sound money. Now, what about hard money? And uh, this is where the Bitcoin comes in. Hard money means there's a limited supply and there's uh, the scarcity uh, built into the Bitcoin system, which means there's no one that can actually add an inflationary system to it. And this is one of the major flaws of uh, fiat money, of dollars, euros, and so on. So what's your take on this, I, 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 Antonio? I am not, no, let, let me, let, let's be honest here. The, 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 the inflationary <laughs> uh, part on the fiat money currently is, is not a flow. <laughs> oh, that's a, that, that's a bold statement. It, actually, actually, the inflation... It's a feature. It, no, it's a feature, yes. And actually, it's, it's not a feature, it's... A, it's, it's the greatest power that a government that is using issuing its own currency has again it's it's the greatest power that is is bigger than the army bigger than everything else you know the the the, the capacity of create for for a government to create uh, money not value money you know uh, it's is, is the greatest weapon. I mean, imagine this, okay? Imagine this. If the US government is printing $100, okay? $100, it's a $100 bill. If they print $100 bill, 
somebody has to work and make something which is value. that will match this value. So let's say you have a $100 bill that was very freshly minted by the uh, uh, by the U.S. government, which, by the way, is not even the U.S. government, but let's not talk about this. Right now. <laughs> okay. And then you go to 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 you you go to Romania, you come to Romania, and you buy you want to buy like I don't know a horse, okay, and, and <laughs> not not a horse, uh, I don't know something, a product. Shoes. I I just don't yeah. have shoes. Um, I, okay. Uh, so you, you, you give this, ba- this, this, this $100 bill and that person is giving you something. It's something you understand you, because we have this convention that this fiat can be exchanged on the product. We believe that that $100 bill has the value for the product right. or the good that I'm selling. So right now, if I then then if I take the one hundred dollar and I go to China and I you know I can buy and stuff and stuff and stuff, but the point is, it was created out of nothing. It's a promissory. And sure, it's a but promissory but it gives based. sure, but the government is giving us something in return. And may I be the devil's advocate here? Yeah, sure. I mean, the government is uh, actually providing first of all security for its citizens uh, through the central banks. So that's what it buys. Not only that they made up some pieces of paper and then you have to put your sweat into it so that you get that piece of paper. Uh, If you put it like this, it sounds a bit, uh, I don't know, malicious. Let me me ask you about They give us security, right? What do you mean by security? I mean, there's no war in uh, most of the countries in the world right now because the governments take care of their citizens. So at least that's how it should be in theory. So it's not really like a one-way trade. Let's not be that <laughs> far off and uh, try to acknowledge that there's a. They actually have a purpose, you know, the government and the okay, central anyway, bank. Okay. Anyway, Zimbabwe, which is, which Zimbabwe is, okay. is not making war with anyone or Venezuela <laughs> or. Uh, uh, Switzerland. Right, right. However, you know their currency has different value, and some of them, some of those currency you like, you would like to have, and some of them you don't want to have. Sure. So, you know, I, I, I think you know we can debate uh, a, a lot of time about you know how, what governments, whatever. But I'm, you know, at, at some point I'm a little bit. I'm, I'm actually happy that you you brought this into the discussion because uh, the idea it's okay the, the the discussion today is about Bitcoin but yeah Bitcoin is just five percent I don't know ten percent out of the blockchain technology now right? it's a reward block, block Bitcoin is like the value it's it's something that was created in order to give value to this technology but you know the blockchain technology is bringing is bringing us the the decentralization power the right. it's it's a different concept of understanding the world uh, around us and this is very hard because for all our life we've been taught and we've been uh, and we grow in in this in this centralized system it's always we had to refer to someone in order to, you know, uh, to live, right? So you have to refer to a government, you have to refer to a bank, you have to refer to, I don't know, a notary, you name it. Some, it's always a third party that it's driving our lives. Where, while with, with a decentralized system, you don't have to go to some entity, government, you name it, just to prove that you are who you are, you know, you exist, you are. So you don't need a paper from the government to tell you that you are. Same thing. And and once you understand this decentralization of stuff, then you understand that you don't need a lot of the structures that are right now embedded in the social mesh, right? And once you understand this and you go a step forward, then you you can you, you can even begin begin sorry to 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 deconstruct the whole social system and 
this is a, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> it, it sounds dangerous, but it's a good way. So therefore, the thing that you are saying, look, uh, the government is backing up the, uh, you know, the money is why do we need the government to back up the money if the money is sitting in our pocket so we can take care of it? Basically, the government is backing up the money because the money is not ours. You understand? So it's a bank. You, no, you, you don't have money. You, <laughs> yeah. you once. OK, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I was just completing what you were just saying, that it's a so, bank note. It's not your money. It's, it's the a note bank, of no, a bank. OK, it's, it's not your money. Yeah. It's not your money. And uh, even if today you receive a 100 lay bill, you know, tomorrow because of the inflation, it will be worth, I don't know, 90 uh, lay or whatever. You understand? So it's always less, less, less. And the money was made as a way for you to pay taxes. Okay, so you it's 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 a way of paying tax. It's like a borrow. It's like the government is borrowing you money to pay them back. Let's not forget that more than more than sixty percent of your earnings are going back to the state. So, guys, what are we talking here? The money that you have in the bank or in your pocket or on your credit card is not your money. It's just something that you to some extent you have access and this is but what blockchain it, and bitcoin is actually when you put it on the bitcoin solving. and blockchain it's yours it's always yours once you have the keys then it's yours if you know i mean all all of you uh encountered uh scenarios where you know you had money on the bank uh, and then the government came and says, okay, I have to block the accounts or I can take the money from you or, you know, all, all, all things like that happen, you know, with, with blockchain and Bitcoin, it's not never going to happen. You, you cannot pull, you can only push. And this is another huge difference. Since you have the keys, you are always in control of what happened with the money. But doesn't this add a layer of risk to the end user? I mean, maybe some of us are not that uh, careful with uh, the PIN or the, the password or a pass key. The, the, and... There is no risk, Sebastian, sure. because the risk you are talking about comes from the fact that 99% of the people are financially uh, illiterate, okay? Once you understand how these things work, what do you understand the economics and once you understand the financial, this is, this is not a problem. I agree, but why should they? Let's, let's try to raise interest now. Why should well, they care? Really, I mean, if you have a good life and you buy your clothing items and you have food and a shelter, you're already very fortunate. Why should you care about being a financial literate, to say, like you say? Why is this important? I think it's, a, it's the, a good point. The, 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 the fact that you, uh, you don't understand how money, uh, is, uh, money is made and how money is spent and how, how, how the whole complex context works on a basic level, then you'll be always, always in debt, regardless how much money you make. You'll okay, and debt. why should this be a problem if I'm happy and I'm in debt? <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'm trying I mean, to advocate come on. for... Uh, you know, I want <laughs> everyone to, to raise country. their hands and say that they are in debt and they are very happy with it. I mean, well, nobody... yeah, most, of, most people are in debt and I don't see them uh, uh, crying on the streets, most of them. So that leads me to my next uh, question, let's say. You mentioned this decentralization and uh, how Bitcoin is very important and the blockchain technologies are important. And um, if if... Tomorrow, everyone is uh, on the blockchain. All the financial system uh, has switched towards a blockchain-friendly environment. How do you see that happening? What are some of the obstacles that we have today? And I'm trying to pinpoint you here towards uh, maybe the speed, the lack of speed, the, the number of transactions per second. What are the challenges of uh, the blockchain technologies nowadays? 
I <laughs> no, let's not talk about this. Uh, let's talk about the fact. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Let, no, listen. It's it's very important for people to understand. It's it's really very important. I'll try to pinpoint some some of these things. One, for the first time in the history of humankind, we have a solid, uh, transparent, and 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 uh, trusty trust by mathematically trust system of value. Okay, this is the first time ever. Second, the entry point to this system is still cheap. It can be reached by anyone in this plan on this planet. Okay. Third, in the actual economical and financial context, the things can only go down. It cannot go go up. They can only go down. And when things go down, you need to have a backup. Now you can buy gold, you can buy silver, you can buy stock. But once you did, or you can buy land, or you can buy, I don't know, diamonds, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever it's see as a value, and you can exchange it if things go down, right? But once you understand that there is this Bitcoin that has some values for some, you should not ignore it. It just you know, don't put everything into it, right? But do something, do some investment, do some uh, research, try to understand some of the things, okay? So you are basically advocating now, for Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies as a store of value? Is that right? Yes, as a okay. store of value, as okay. a store of, of, of uh, uh, from other perspectives, I am not in the best uh, position to discuss about the the technology right i think you know there are better better guys than me in the terms of technology but the the scope of this today's discussion sure, was sure. about bitcoin right mm -hmm. so and money and yeah. money okay so now imagine the following scenario okay Im just let's imagine okay as you probably uh, know, and some of the guys that are with us today, they know and they, they found out um, this year, there are a lot of companies that started to move their uh, assets, assets. Uh, in their, um, uh, you know, in, in, the, in their books, in their accounting, in, in a Bitcoin. Okay, and I'm not talking about small, crazy, stupid guys, you know, noisy guys. I'm talking about big guys that starting to pour like billions into this thing. Now, you try, I, I mean, when obviously when you see kind of this, this stuff happening, you, you are asking yourself, what the heck happened? Why, why in the heck somebody will put, a, I don't know, a, a billion or two billions into this? Why they will borrow fiat? And so you're talking about Bitcoin. Tesla and MicroStrategy and right? so forth, right? So why? And then and I'm pretty sure that everybody asks why. So have you tried to figure out why they did this? I liked the Michael Saylor's answer on this. So when people asked him, he's the CEO of MicroStrategy, one of the first, uh, among the first companies that moved some of their assets, $500 million of assets into Bitcoin. And he said that uh, the company was actually staying on a, on a block of ice that was melting, and that was cash. So he wanted to replace the melting ice with something more solid, with a store of value that was more solid. But uh, yeah, that, that was what he said. So what, what do you think? Yeah, Is that the reason? They, or? They, basically very in a very romantic way he's, he's he's saying the truth so imagine let's imagine the following fact you are running a company and then you have a profit of let's say 100 million dollars a year okay so every year you make 100 million dollars and then you put this 100 million in 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 a bank and then the next at the end of the year you figure it out that you don't have 100 million, you have less because of the bank fees, inflation and so forth. So you don't have 100 million, you have, let's say, for the Eight. sake of the discussion, 90 million. Mm -hmm. So now what's going to happen? 
your shareholders are starting to complain because at the end of the day, right. you have less money, so you pay less dividends. So your market capitalization is smaller because of some factors that are independent of you. Okay, the inflation, you cannot control the inflation. You cannot control the, 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 the bank uh, uh, interest and so. So what you have to do? You have to work a little bit more so you can put another 100 million and plus another 10 just to reach this. But guess what? The next year, the situation is getting worse, right? Because it's now you have 200 millions and then and then and so and so so at some point somebody said okay why should i do this with fiat why why don't we buy gold or uh, silver or whatever stock or whatever you know they did that and uh, you know gold is going down silver is going a little bit down as a value so not a very good investment so here comes some crazy one says, okay, there is this asset that is increasing value. If you look on the long term, which we are interested on long term, it has better return than a bank account, gold or other investments. So let's buy this stuff. This is what happened. Now, if you are like Tesla and you put 1.6 billions uh, when uh, for, you know, and you buy, I don't know, thousands of, of, of Bitcoins. And then in two months, the value of the Bitcoin doubles, then you basically have assets that are double in value. So the cap, the market, the, the company, the value of the company is double. Well, in Almost. let's, to some extent, it's not, I'm kind of, it's not the exact numbers, right? we're talking here so anyway you have an asset that doubles in value now this is great and what will happen well uh, another companies will start looking into this this is one second and this is where things start to become interesting uh you can borrow money based on the assets that you have right sure so the power of uh uh, getting credit, a good interest on, on credit for Tesla, it just went very from good to very good because they have more money to guarantee. And this is the asset that they bought, right? But on the other hand, there is another thing that is very interesting in my opinion. It's what happened when companies will start um making transaction between them using bitcoin imagine so moving a from minute. a store of value to a medium of exchange right mm -hmm. and you so said value from the store of value right. to exchange right. now when we when we do this the governments more or less they are fucked uh <laughs> why well because uh, you have some value that is exchanged without taxation, without going to the financial system, banks and so forth. And here we are not talking about small guys, we are talking about big guys. Imagine now that Tesla, Amazon and Apple and Google, they'll start to, or I don't know, other companies from Europe or from, Asia and so forth, they are starting to do this transaction between them, which are perfectly legal. But on the, the other hand, the, 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 the governments are getting nothing. Okay, nothing, no taxation and anything. That's and a nightmare. By the way, <laughs> the, these companies are so big that they have another weapon, which is called lobby. Okay, mm -hmm. so they can lobby. You cannot, the government cannot, you know, impose crazy stuff to these kind of companies because they lobby, they, you know. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a tricky thing. I think, I think with this move, what happened this January, February this year, with a lot of companies coming and, 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 and moving uh, 
changing fiat to uh, Bitcoin or other crypto and put it in their books is just the beginning of the snowball. Okay, I think this will get higher and higher and higher. And as you, uh, let's not forget that the pressure will come uh, from the shareholders. Always the pressure comes from the shareholders. I mean, imagine they want more money. Know, That's normal, right? The shareholders of, of, of uh, I don't know, BMW going and say, hey, look, those crazy guys from uh, Tesla, they bought Bitcoin for, and why you are st staying on the a pile of cash if you are not using it uh, why don't you convert it because if you convert it and then you sell the bitcoins uh, we as the shareholders will be sure more if, money. if it goes up but there there are concerns that it will go down or to zero how would you respond to that i mean that's perfectly valid too the, the, in the I eyes of shareholders the guys <laughs> I'm, I'm trying just to no, I'm not, I don't want to annoy you. I just want for everyone to know these answers because they are important. So there is no people should know. There is no way. Okay. There is no reason <laughs> to go down. You understand this? It's it's as long as sure. But I would like to to find some of the reasons, like the the uh, logical reasons behind it. And what's your, uh, what was your thinking? Not only because you say so, that's amazing. And a few other people on the crypto Twitter, they say so, that's okay. I say it myself, but I would like to go deeper, a bit deeper and try to find the reasoning behind it. So why do you think Bitcoin will go only up on the long term? But because it's going it has, up. sure, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get some reasons such as because it's of its scarcity, because there are only 21 million Bitcoins, there will be only 21 million Bitcoins minted ever. And that's one point, and that's a valid point, not just because we say so and we uh, understand uh, what's going on. So that's one thing, right? We were talking uh, earlier on about hard money and what makes them hard. It's exactly this, this scarcity. And then uh, what other reason? Because there's no central authority that may corrupt it. That's another logical argument and rational argument pro bitcoin and why it doesn't go down uh, uh, another one is the ownership that we exactly discuss. you own the money you own the value you store the value mm -hmm. it's yours nobody can touch it no nobody can take it from you right right that's that's also very important i have a very interesting question in my mind and it's not only towards you it's only also towards myself, let's say. So uh, I, let's take this thing. Bitcoin is the future of money, right? And cryptocurrencies maybe in general are, are the future of money. Okay, let's take this as a given. Why does it matter then? What's the price of Bitcoin today? It doesn't. <laughs> okay, it okay. but people it are so, it so does, it, okay. you were just saying that Michael Saylor and Tesla and so on are saying that they won't, don't want to stay on a pile of cash. They want to convert it to something more lucrative, such as Bitcoin, but they are actually referring and you just referred to it as in Tesla doubled its value since exactly. its value in what in Bitcoin? Yeah, but, no, but, but I'm saying they, this, I'm saying the same this number because... of Bitcoin. Sebi, if I would say the value of the Bitcoin, it doesn't matter, that, that, that will be a, such a strong affirmation that, you know, people will don't get but it. But it is important to know that one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. And that's what matters. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what point. actually matters. It's not that's that one Bitcoin is 60,000 or $6 million. It doesn't it's still matter. one Bitcoin. So it's important to underline this. And why is this such an important thing? And, and, and another and before I answer to that, let me continue with the sure, with, sure. with the answer is uh, the reason I said that the value double and the blah 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 you know stuff like that is because it, it, it's truly enforce what I said previously is because of the shareholders and uh, and and because of the this this financial illiteracy okay because most of the shareholders they don't but they don't think in crypto they think in 
in, in fiat. They, they have other expenses and whatever. They want the money, okay? They want the, the money that they are used to. But the future of, of, of crypto and the, 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 the reason uh, that the value is, is not important. I mean, it's important if you do, uh, you know, uh, trading. You do tra tra trading very, yeah. you know, when you're trying to make a, to mark up a profit on the first time. But if you hold the, the money on the long run, I mean, like five, 10, 20 years, it, it will not matter because supposedly we will, the, the, the whole point is to have some sort of a circular economy. A circular ecosystem where from the producer to the final user everything will be paid in crypto if it's bitcoin and is other uh, or other cryptocurrency it really doesn't matter because you know with this technology you can have the swapping and blah blah you know better than me right but the idea is you cannot have a, a, a model that is not only store of value but transactional uh, per se, uh, unless you have it a circular system, a circular ecosystem. And we supposedly will be able to have this in, I don't know, five, 10 years. Doesn't Okay, that's uh, a the good thing I found doesn't... out from you today. <laughs> and yeah. I'm trying to get to my next question, which is how about stable coins? What are these and how are they impacting the the road towards uh, thinking in crypto instead of thinking in fiat. So stable coins, for those that, of you that do not know, are coins that are pegged to fiat, which means one dollar has uh, uh, one US, one crypto dollar has one US dollar uh, to, to back it up. And uh, most of the countries now are thinking about issuing their own currencies, their own uh, stable coins. Uh, you, in the US, there are a few already, such as uh, USDC, USDT, and uh, there are some scandals around it. Of course, USDT, it said that may, they may not or may have enough money to back it up. So I see it as a good thing towards this um, moving towards thinking in crypto instead of fiat. How about you? What's your take on I I, I think coins? that I think the stable coins are, 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 are the biggest piece of, and here you put have to put a beep okay. that exists. Okay, you, okay. you know you, you, cannot, you cannot you cannot call you cannot call and... something stable. You know when you. <laughs> Don't be so but, angry. Come on, try chill. Okay, no. is, I get this, it. I get is, it. But it's like it's stable coins are like this. Let's say I'm on a boat in the middle of the sea, right? And then you say, and I'm just floating, pushed by the wind. Okay, and then you come with your boat, and they say, "Hey, can I? Uh, can we tight? You know, can I?" put some ropes and get tied to you. And uh, and I say, yes, and you do this. From your perspective, you are stable. But from the whole point, we are both moving in whatever direction. You may say it even easier. So it's not stable as long as it's, it has inflation attached to it. Exactly. So it's stable towards so it's, what? Towards itself? It's stable. <laughs> it's the only stable thing is the comfort for guys that uh, again they don't understand how the financial and monetary system is working right right so it's it's stupid uh, come on let's go back to the history bank of england when they they they, they 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 give more they they sold more uh, gold that they had in their uh, in their vaults you know come on it's Bank of England, it's the US or Romania or, I don't know, Venezuela has a stable coin, but nobody gives <laughs> a goddamn thing about Anything. them because it's related to what? Come on, Se Sebi, this is a joke with stable coins. It's just a joke. It's a bad joke. It's either we go in a direction that is... Sure, but I see a silver know, lining here because it's it's... It actually helps, as I said, I think it really helps towards the embracing of this magical technology, which is blockchain. So if you want, you, you can't really have, or I, I wouldn't put it that harsh, 
have a um, standoff with the governments and central banks from day zero. I think we are on the brink of a new era that's ended now and starts for the next 500 years. So you can't just switch it from day zero and say, okay, tomorrow cryptocurrencies are magical, we're going to all use it, it's going to solve all the problems in the world. You have to somehow get the no, path right it would be no, magical no, but it, no, no, it, no, no, i don't no, think it's no. like that okay, anyway it could be we, a silver you know lining what? here you, you, let's agree to disagree okay okay that's let's awesome okay Good. because you are saying uh, okay we have these beautiful things is uh, what what is called when you, when they give you the when they do the 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 test with the new medicine they give uh, or the placebo okay yeah. so stable coins are placebo okay stable coins <laughs> which are is placebo, which right? is amazing in medicine so without placebo we wouldn't have had so much advance yeah, because it's for the comfort and we don't we don't know how to compare it so it's, right. it's a good thing that yeah, we have stable exactly coins that was what some extent saying. okay yeah. but let's yeah. not make this the rule and on the yeah. other hand we are in the brain uh, there is a revolution coming that is is a, is a not a revolution it's a paradigm shift okay right right, right. And you are saying, okay, let's put some sugar, let's sugarcoat it because, you know, some of the people will not be able to uh, digest it. What? Well, when, when we look in, at, uh, when we look at the historical events and what happened when we actually switched eras, what happened was there was a lot of blood, a lot of riots or uh, violence. And I'm really hoping that that's not happening to us in the near term future. And that's why I'm trying to find the silver lining to it. Uh, I mean, I appreciate your uh, honesty and I love that we agree to disagree. It would be pretty boring to, to always say the same things about the same stuff. Um, but I hope, let's say then, to rephrase it, I hope for a near-term future where we don't end up in riots and blood on the streets. Uh, that's, that's my reasoning behind it. So now, going to another uh, amazing topic that you will love, and that's altcoins. <laughs> so the other cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin. And I have here a very specific uh, duo in mind. And one is Dogecoin, and the other oh. is Elrond, the e-gold from Elrond. So let's see why these two coins are so far off, so they're not even on the same page uh, or on the same book. Uh, Dogecoin, for those of you that don't know, it's a fork of Bitcoin that happened a few years ago. Someone made it as a joke, and that joke today has a huge cap market cap. Uh, because basically Elon Musk is just making fun of it at all times possible. On the other hand, we have Elrond Network, which is a very serious enterprise, and they launched their own coin, which is eGold, that is actually revolutionizing the whole blockchain space by adding 250,000 transactions per second um, to, to, the, to this space. Now, Antonio... What's your take on altcoins in general? What's your take on Doge versus Eagled? And uh, how is that better than Bitcoin, actually? Why are they supposed to exist? <laughs> okay. Take it one by one. <laughs> Don't get angry. Just take it easy. <laughs> no, I'm not angry, man. It's, uh, well, uh, you know what? I think this is the beauty of the blockchain technology. You can create, you know, if you and I tomorrow, we create a coin and we trust it, then it's a store of value because we said so and we agreed upon that, right? If somebody else, Felix, joins in, there, there are three of us and four and so forth. So Dogecoin started as a joke. It's still a joke because it's not bringing anything new, basically. But it basically shows that if we agreed on a value uh, or on, on something, uh, that something has a value. Okay. Right. So is Dog Dogecoin uh, revolutionary? No, it's not bringing anything. I mean, with some little tweet tweaks on, on tweaks on 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 the technology 
but is is bringing something new no it is storing value yes it's storing value it is uh, you know secure yes it is secure it is accepted by some other people yes it is accepted so good dogecoin even if it's a joke it's store of value um, discussion is ended right mm-hmm. elrond on the other hand it's it's is one of those things that i i, I told you about in the beginning of the discussion where you know people understood you know you the, their eyes were open when they understood the 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 concept of blockchain and the bitcoin which by the way historically speaking is kind of a progressive uh um learning you know, process learning process so it it was groundbreaking but it was based on technologies and ideas that were you know they were going like tens of years in the back right so but the beauty the beauty part of the blockchain and bitcoin is uh it made other people start thinking and see okay bitcoin has not so many transactions has is the block size is like that blah 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 you know proof of work consumes a lot of energy whatever you know it's not trusted it's complex it's whatever so people started to think about it how can we make things better and then you come with uh, variations of the blockchain or new technologies new approaches and this is what i don't know ethereum did that and 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 Elrond is doing this and some other guys are doing it so Elrond it's 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 a beautiful implementation of a vision and 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 ideas and technologies that are uh, you know are 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 offering a, a new perspective of how transaction can be done decentralized fast trustworthy and so forth um you know it's it's a progression it's is like block blockchain i don't know 3.0 let's say we <laughs> for whatever reason there was and maybe maybe there are other companies that are now working on blockchain 4.0 and so forth so at the end of the day we see improvements and in some 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 point some very uh, disruptive uh, uh changes in the technology but at the end is it's progress and this is the beauty of it the, is this going to affect bitcoin i don't think so at, at, at this point bitcoin has the biggest market capitalization it's so as a store of value and it found its place its place like a store of value despite the fact that you know satoshi told was talking about a Uh, a peer to peer uh electronic cash system of, of of exchanging value but it is what it is so i believe and this is kind of very interesting that every technology is finding its own place it's not about erasing everything is about replacing but on the other hand is about erasing the goddamn financial and monetary system that exists right now which is an omen again <laughs> again you're going towards that path I'm going makes you yeah, happy now i'm going Sebi, <laughs> because for the first time the this generation this the people that are living right now they have the truly unique uh moment in the history of humankind of becoming uh, financially independent and to actually change the system from uh from the roots okay it's a paradigm it's 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 huge it's so huge that i really don't have the words to explain to you right i don't have the words in romanian uh, in english is a little bit more complicated okay uh probably in chinese will sound like great. <laughs> so, well i i, uh, I got i got the point so we are in the middle of a revolution that's what you are saying and people yeah. should open their eyes and that's actually why we are here today to try to make them open their eyes and uh, try to convince them that at least no, they should no, no. pay let's attention let's not convince them to no it. to pay no, attention no, I don't no want, i'm, I'm I don't trying to do to that to get people to pay to attention 
to try them to convince them that it's something good or bad that's something that they should decide but to pay attention yes i'm trying to convince them and i hope today they uh, at least we rose some interest and i would like to uh, ask you about regulation uh, so I know you have a long history of uh, working with uh, payments systems. You were actually one of the pioneers, uh, Netopia Payments is one of the pioneers uh, uh, worldwide that uh, added uh, the option to pay with crypto in 2015. And you recently added uh, eGold to, to, the, to your portfolio to more than 30,000 merchants. So my question to you is, how difficult is to work with uh, the like, regulatory bodies in achieving that? I can only imagine it's a nightmare. And I remember uh, your partner Felix saying that it's done by Netopia Magic, which is OK. It's cool. Sounds amazing. Uh, what's your opinion or take on regulations? How should the central authorities work towards a better financial system? It's not a trick question, I promise. It's an honest question towards... It, it, is, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It sounds like an honest question, but it's a trick question. <laughs> and it's not because you are trying to trick me. It's because it's impossible to see it as an honest question. And now uh, let me explain to you this, the whole thing is so disruptive that is going to shift the power from one hand to another. And uh, uh, the, the other hand is not belonging to the same person as it is right now with the financial system. When they change the money change, this the same, the same person. Okay. So we are, we, 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 we with this thing in, in, in your mind, try to understand how come someone that has power, total power by controlling, I saw, I told you the biggest power of, of a government is the power of creating inflation, therefore right. creating more money. So how come do you believe that somebody that has this total power, absolute power, will give this away, creating some favorable uh, piece of legislation for crypto. It's not going to happen, my friend. It's not. It's simply not going to happen. They will, sh and it's not going to happen because of several things. One of the things is, it's not going to happen because they don't have any idea of how this thing works. Come on, Second, come on. Maybe, maybe in Romania, in, in other countries, there are, there are a lot of smart people working on this. As I said, they don't, some of them, they don't have ideas. Some of them, they don't want to change uh -huh. because they okay. want power, that's, right? That's, yeah, that's more likely. Okay. And uh, some of them, they don't even, are, they are not even interested in learning about this. You understand? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, good. Now, in Romania, well, first thing is, at least we are with, with crypto, we are not illegal, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. But we are not illegal because uh, another beautiful thing that is in the government hand and it's called greed. Okay. They want to take taxes. So they created this legislation saying if you're making money out of crypto, you have to pay taxes. This is greed. Okay. So they put this on the table and uh, they adopted it. And uh, then somebody figured out that this was the dumbest thing that they could do. <laughs> How come? Because by saying you can pay taxes for something, uh, for an exchange of value, this means you somehow recognize this value. Okay. So this is stupid. Good stupid. There are different levels of stupid. But this is good stupid. <laughs> Okay. Now, now, now we, and when I say we, I, when I go to the banks or to the National Bank of Romania or to some other authorities, I say, okay, but you know, I want to pay taxes for this, right? So if I want to pay taxes, this means uh, if I exchange it, 
I, I make profit, I pay taxes, right? Right. Sure. So if you are a bank and you don't open me an account, how do I pay taxes? In crypto, because, like in Switzerland. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to sell it officially to some exchange in order to, you know, receive the fiat and pay taxes, right? And they say, yes, but uh, if we open you an account, this means we recognize it. And if we recognize it, there will be a lot of crazy, stupid people like you, Antonio, that will open accounts and will start buying and selling crypto just to make to pay taxes. OK, I'm making it fun here. Right. But you get the point. Sure. But so their main the concern is say, related to AML and KYC, not 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 yeah, that. And then, actually. and then the banks are saying, look, we are not going to open you the bank account because AML. Uh, it's our it's our policy not to if we don't like you, we don't open an account, which uh, I, I'm telling you the story that happened. Actually, this is true facts, right? So we went to all the banks and all the banks refused us. And then we went to uh, National Bank of Romania and they say, hey, look, uh, we want to open a bank account and the banks don't allow us. Why do, have you have anything to do with it? Have you told them not to? And they say, no. And I say, okay, oh. but, and I say, but how come they can refuse? And they say, well, it's, it's normal because if the banks, uh, the banks can uh, refuse to open an account for, for uh, you know, for someone. And I say, yes, this is okay. It's correct. But what happened if all the banks are refusing? Oh, this is, this shouldn't happen. Okay. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, this was one thing. The second thing is uh, I discuss with uh, another authority of the Romanian government and say, okay, if I am not allowed to exchange my crypto on fiat and therefore to pay taxes, uh, so the government is making money, then I have to go on the black market to change this. So if it's on black market, you can kiss the tax money bye-bye. And they say, yep, yeah, that, that's not good. We need to <laughs> we need to come with some solution. Okay. So now we are in this position that kind of uh, you know, we kind of put them in in front of each other, and now they are starting to try to figure out a way to understand this, and now we are helping them to figure it out. So sounds like we, a difficult chess game to play actually it is i mean it took me it took us like i don't know uh, six years six years you yeah. know so yeah. it's you know so uh, this is the moment right so we agreed on money uh anti-money laundering approach and kyc and blah 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 but and i'm hoping that nobody from a bank is listening to this because I'm going to say uh, something. <laughs> but I hope it's going to, a lot of people will hear this. So <laughs> we are going to ride along with this. Okay. But the ultimate goal will be when I will be no more on this, on this earth, when the economy will be circular and we don't need the fiat and we don't need the banks. And well, yeah, until that's... then, until then, we have to play along. Okay, right, exactly. But the ultimate goal is is, is this one to create an, an a closed loop ecosystem. Well, I th so, I think we, we are on the plan. good path. It's, your, it's so secret that we're gonna share it as much as possible. Evil plan. Yeah. This <laughs> yeah. Is the right. Evil plan. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned uh, being uh, actually an in innovator in this space for such a long time. Uh, you mentioned recently on your uh, Facebook feed that you're, it's happening. You're going to launch the Romanian crypto exchange. How and when is this going to happen? That's an, another uh, simple question today for you, Antonio. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully it will happen soon. Okay, hopefully. The, the, the whole point is right now, and you have to, you guys have to understand this. I am not, I am not doing this exchange for me. Well, I'm doing it for me because I want to make money, but I am also doing it 
because it will prove that we can change the world, okay? So I'm doing this event, experiment with a lot of, with some other friends with me and partners, uh, because uh, we, we will go to every single step of not only uh, learning, but teaching the government, the banks, the National Bank of Romania, the, everyone, and the, the users, the potential future users, the company, the investors, you name it. Every single step we learn and will teach in the same time. So we will create the environment for other crypto exchanges and other businesses to uh, prevail and to grow, okay? This, 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 this is uh, a legacy, okay? If you want to see it like this, because we are changing the behavior. We are changing even the legislation. We are uh, trying to accommodate the existing legislation and the future one. We can create some new legislation, new approach, new practices and so forth, new best practices and so forth. Because at the end of the day, we want to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add here a disclaimer. Uh, so the so, Romanian... <laughs> at the end, we want to everybody to be happy, you know, everybody to right. be happy. And to, to, uh, to add to this uh, path of uh, exploring uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchain and, I don't know, moving it forward for uh, us as a human race. And I would like to add that uh, I'm fully supporting the Romanian crypto exchange project that you just uh, started. And mm. uh, that should not be a secret. And I should have it as a disclaimer that I'm fully supportive for uh, teaching and uh, showing the government how and we can coexist. So I might be a lot less than you are, uh, I don't know, um, prone to uh, radical expressions, but I am on the same boat uh, and that should be mentioned. So I would like to add a few books here that I would recommend and then I would uh, turn it to you, Antonio, for our uh, viewers and uh, listeners on Clubhouse. And then I would like to get some people from the audience, from the Clubhouse audience to ask a few questions. Uh, so. What uh, helped me in my journey uh, as, a, as a technology enthusiast, businessman, uh, and also as a scholar was reading a lot about blockchain. When I first heard about it, I went through that rabbit hole and a lot of books and academic papers le led me to know a bit about it. And I'm trying to learn more every day. And some of the books that I learned that I learned from are um, not necessarily in this order. I would highly recommend you to read Wealth of Nations, and that's by Adam Smith, of course. So Wealth of Nations actually pinpoints and lays down the basic stuff for the current economy that we live in. It's a long book, but I highly recommend you if you are interested in economy and why Bitcoin and blockchain are so revolutionary, then you should start with, uh, with the proper background and that's Wealth of Nations. Another um, book uh, that comes, uh, let's say, um, uh, in, in completing this uh, first book is The Debt, The First 5,000 Years, and it paints a picture of why is Wealth of Nations wrong so that the first 5,000 years is, a, is, is an amazing book that I highly recommend. Uh, of course, Austrian economics papers, academic papers, and why Austrian economics uh, shifted the grounds in the uh, late 1900s. And um, I would say Bitcoin Standard is one of the books that I, I liked a lot. It's a bit more uh, like Anto how Antonio speaks today. So if you take that out of the equation and you focus on facts, you would see that the Bitcoin standard is, is actually the book nowadays that kind of sums up what we have discussed today. And I would like to leave Antonio now to highlight some suggestions for us in terms of books or maybe um, references on what, what our listeners and viewers should focus on after finishing this session. 
I, I'm, you know, there are gazillion. Oh. Uh, we can't hear you anymore. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, you told me that when you talk to. Put yeah. The, so um, I, I, there are gazillions books and 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 and, um, and articles and YouTube. Depending on how, the level of laziness you, you are in, you know, you can read a book or you just uh, podcasts watch a uh, YouTube or just, you know, put it, stay here and try to kind of hear us while you do some other stuff. Anyway, so there are gazillions ways of basically getting into crypto. And um, I think, that, but there are, there are some that are very easy, you know, um, and uh, I, I, I don't remember which one was, but I will, I will, put it on Facebook again or something like that. It's basically a, a, a website where you can find the super basic information of, you know, everything that is crypto and investment and money and everything else. So once you get that, then you are, you are set. But the idea is don't leave your curiosity away. Be curious every day and try to understand and try to figure out your um, your answers to your questions and don't look into some to, you know you know people that are just talking because they like to talk. That's it. You know, and then and I know that this is against what we are doing here to some extent, but um, it's it's really what it matters. It matters to be curious. It matters to understand. It matters to ask questions. It it matters to challenge, because I told you about the para the shift in the paradigm, the paradigm shift. It 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 only happens when people are curious and. And it only happens when educated people. And when I say educated, I'm saying people that understand what's going on. Um, well, let's uh, hope today they understand a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, so when educated people are starting to participate and to um, s spread the but not it's not like a evangelical or a, you no, know it's enthusiasm uh, of course it, when it's, you're, it's enthusiasm yeah. right so this is why you know in the in, in in all this discussion i told you i don't want to convince anyone I, it's not my scope i am not saying uh, you should do this or you should invest or whatever i'm not doing that what i'm saying is just be curious you have an opportunity it's your choice if you take it or not. It's really your choice. But don't influence others, neither in good or bad. Take your, your own decision and then just well, spread this information and leave other people to be curious and jump to their conclusions and so forth. This, this, is, this is how we progress. There are so many... Uh, there are so many uh people that are you know biased and then they just uh, oh, this is not working uh i don't know blah 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 it, or this is the greatest thing i don't know i don't i i, I really i believe that is the greatest thing you, it's not necessarily good for you to believe that's why i was just mentioning to read read the books and try to educate yourself before uh, taking any kind of decision but i would uh, love to know that uh, we managed today to at least raise interest and uh, get some of you excited and i would like to ask our friends in clubhouse uh, right now to uh, ask to join us on stage if there are some questions uh, that uh, want to be asked and um, Moving to the next uh, question, Bef so please, if you want to ask a question in Clubhouse, raise your hand and uh, I'm going to add you to, to the stage. And uh, I want to ask you, Antonio, now, what about payment gateways and systems? You, as I mentioned, you have done something amazing. You know how to uh, 
to create uh, wealth in this crypto environment. How about uh, other countries? And, and that's actually a question that uh, uh, for a few days ago, Christian Manafu just asked uh, me. What's going on worldwide in terms of payments with crypto? And how do you see this happening? Okay, uh, I will be very, very, very brief because I want, I really, I'm really interested in, in hearing other, uh, you know, questions and stuff. So uh, everything I told you is basically against of what I'm doing right now as a business, because once this circular economy in crypto will take in place, basically what we are doing right now, it's going to be obsolete. Visa, MasterCard, banks, uh, payment gateways, and so forth will be obsolete unless we come out with some other ideas and, you know, will prevail. Uh, but per se, the, 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 the system is going to be obsolete. Okay, it's not going to be obsolete in like five years, 10, 15, but at the end, it will be. Um, uh, second thing, uh and this is a <laughs> this is funny you don't need an utopia payments in order to process bitcoin or a, a ethereum a, a gold or whatever transaction you really don't you can do it by yourself okay the reason we implement it is because uh well we, we were talking a lot about we were talking a lot about this is financial Ill, 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 illiteracy right so basically the accountant saying, okay, you don't give me Bitcoins because I don't know how to do it in the Romanian accounting system. Therefore I want cash. So we are some sort of an exchange uh, that is exchanging uh, crypto into cash. And basically we are sending it to the companies that are selling goods or services. So uh, implementation is, is not a big deal. I mean, it's a technological good deal because we managed to do a lot of, uh, you know, to cross a lot of corners. Okay. Uh, to be honest, uh, here, our accounting company, the accounting company that is working for They us, love you. They, they, yeah, they, they <laughs> love you, me so much that you can, if they can kill me, like in like, Every day will be great. <laughs> anyway, so we did all this stuff just because we believe in this technology and we wanted to show that it works, okay? But you don't need us. Now, in other countries, uh, because you don't need uh, companies like me in order to accept crypto, in other countries where you know they don't care or they have a legislation that is a little bit more permissive than ours, they just jump in and they do acceptance. But to understand the, the proportion of the craziness is, is what Visa told, uh, announced the other day saying that they will by default in, uh, um, open cryptocurrency payments to 400 million companies all over the world. So they want to have a little piece of the game before they go down in history. Okay, but they will not very soon, don't get me wrong. Oh my God. Yeah. Again with the bold statements. <laughs> yeah, that's me, man. This is how it works, you know? <laughs> it, right. it works with the person that comes and it's not me, and then comes and propose something. 99.99% .99 of the people saying, this is stupid. And then there is 0.01% that say, hey, this is a cool idea, let's work on it. And then there is the paradigm shift. And then this thing becomes the new normal. And then there's another one coming and the system is repeating. Think of, think of cars, think of electricity, think of, you know, computers. Yeah, any innovation, okay. right. Any innovation, right? The, why they needed cars, they had, horses for thousands of years why you needed telephone when, or, or telegraph when you had uh, letters uh, and why you needed telephone when you have telegraph and why you needed you know stuff like that why you needed mobile phones sure Who so on the diffusion of innovation now? where we are at where do you think we are at so we see that yeah, cryptocurrencies we, we barely, are barely less than one percent right 
1.2 trillion dollars which is yes. nothing yes but every circle every cycle is going up faster and faster and faster okay faster and faster it took phone i don't know hundreds of years to reach it took internet tens of years but it took uh, you know everything everything is moving faster and faster and faster at the end of the day um i i am willing to put a bet and say that this technology in 10 years will be mainstream wow. mainstream, mainstream? way okay <laughs> let's see who takes that bet i'm gonna have a follow-up uh, show uh, every couple of weeks and we're gonna see who takes your bet right that would be nice <laughs> okay we do so, a smart contract yeah right <laughs> we put it in a blockchain so uh okay so if you if you say right we are on the right path on getting this uh, amazing technology better known and uh, spread and adopted uh how come people are still asking and asking me and not only and asking google right how to make money out of crypto i think that's the the one of the first barriers that we should uh, address um seriously yeah people are more interested in making money than in changing the world because so, they don't understand the concept of money okay but so what can we do about it uh nothing <laughs> well i'm i'm here again i'm trying to uh, agree to disagree with you it, because even this show is actually meant to make people uh, be more interested and try to uh, make people uh, ask themselves some questions and move towards uh, higher adoption. So uh, I'm going to ask now uh, Mara, who's on stage, to uh, briefly, very briefly ask a question because we have some technical challenges and our viewers will not be able to uh, listen to her. So I have to re-ask re the question for YouTube and Facebook. But Mara, please uh, ask us anything. to do integrate uh, cryptocurrencies because the problem with other um, fintechs is that there's a, a lot of lack of trust in the space. Um, we are now looking at the uh, at things from the perspective of the boom of the uh, Bitcoin. And we so, are sorry, Mara, our, our viewers on Facebook and uh, YouTube are right now hearing absolutely nothing and it's a bit awkward. So I want to rephrase it. Would you please be kind and ask uh, the question? Sorry to be so blunt. Hello, do you hear me now? Yes, can you please ask the question? So Mara thinks that the banks will succeed instead of crypto. Awesome. And what is your question for me or Antonio, please? Um, I don't really have a question. Ah, I uh, okay. just wanted to share this uh, thing. Awesome. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. Okay. So, so the, you, the, she thinks the, that actually Mara banks saying, banks are... Uh, what getting, Mara was saying yeah. was saying like this. Uh, fintech... Uh, they don't have trust okay uh and the banks will succeed in the battle of uh, this crypto mm -hmm. because she has a fair point actually so uh, yeah what well, what do you think i i, I mean it's an over overpowered uh, battle if you take someone that it's 99 percent uh, prone to win or more than 99%. I mean, it's, it's the underdog that it's uh, not looking so good right now. So what do you think? I'm trying to be very polite. No, don't uh, be polite. Spit it out. <laughs> now is the so, time. So Mara, Mara, I'm sorry, but you, we, we need to talk, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a regular on Clubhouse. Because you need so to you understand the differences okay bitcoin has nothing to do with the fintech it's nothing okay 
Bitcoin and crypto can exist without anything else, right? One. Second, the banks are holding your money. The money that is not even yours is the government's money. The banks are only the vectors of the governments who are issuing this thing that we refer as money. There is a huge difference. Imagine, and I said at the beginning of this discussion, imagine that you have your own value, not money, value. You are carrying it with you. You control it. You access it. And you decide if you want to give it to whom, in what condition. Compare this with what you have right now with the banks, uh, bank accounts, credit cards, and so forth. This is a different approach on how the value is stored and value is moved. And I understand it's hard because it's totally different because we grow in a different system that we don't understand what decentralization is. But try to, to learn, try to understand it. And then you will jump to a conclusion. But if you are telling me that the banks will win, I am pretty sure that you have, uh, you, you don't have the whole pictures, the whole picture, and you need to understand it a little bit more. And I am happy to help. Really, I'm really happy to help. Well, I think so today's it, show was uh, about helping out, and exactly for people like Mara, we should be more aware yeah, yeah, yeah. that before going into a, a kind of a battle or debate, we should prepare ourselves to get the right uh, reasoning behind it and try to be as, uh, as clear as possible. So uh, earlier on, we talked just briefly about transparency and trust and decentralization. And I wanted just to focus a bit on trust. Why are we supposed to have a direct trust in terms of blockchain adoption? and not rely ourselves on intermediaries like we do right now. We are using a lot of technology such as Clubhouse, Zoom, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. All of these are centralized, deeply centralized. How come we need a decentralized system of trust? Why do we need it? And I would like to ask you, Antonio, this, and uh, I, I can also pitch in with my own answer to it, but I guess it's almost uh, along the same lines. Because, because a, a, a system with third party can be corrupted. And it can be corrupted even if it's full of good intention. It can be corrupted. You, you know, once you have a third person in the equation, you know, regardless what that third person says, it <laughs> you cannot be trusted, okay? Unless it's some, it shows some uh, real proof. Uh, I mean, proof of trust. It, it's, it's very complex to explain this. It's really, but again, start from the basic. Right now, we are relying on an entity, a governmental entity, the government, a third party entity, which is the government, to demonstrate that we exist. This is unbelievable. You understand? This is unbelievable. We create our identity. They have to create our identity because, you know, uh, they need a way. They, the reason they create this identity is because if I want to uh, show myself in front of Sebi, uh, because there is no other way, there was no other way, Sebi, in order to know that I am who I am, he wanted to see a proof of identity. And this is why the government says, okay, I am above all, I, I, I issue. can issue an ID for uh, Antonio and now an ID for Sebi, Therefore, they can exchange these ideas and see that they are who they think they are, which, by the way, is it's working 
in the real world because the system was designed for live interactions. Now, if you want to prove yourself using the traditional methods in the online environment, this is where things are getting fucked up. When you want to do a payment uh, with a card, let's say, there is this system that it says it's called 3D Secure that sends you an SMS message or you, it is another way of validating because it, the system doesn't know that you are you, okay? Same thing when you open, a, let's say, a Revolut account, okay? It's, you have to take a picture of your ID then you have to take a picture of you. Then you have to take a picture of you holding the ID and, and so forth, because the system was designed for real life interaction, not for digital. And today's world is digital. Now, the system with crypto and with the blockchain technology is that it has the trust within. Once you say that you are this one, you can prove it without any other party. And this is the game changer. That it doesn't sounds... matter if you are Antonio or whatever the name it is, it, it, this doesn't matter, but you can prove that you have access to the value and you can, pro you can prove that you are who you say you are. In a this sounds a bit libertarian, let's say. And uh, it is freaking libertarian. For those of you that it, haven't it, read the Rothbard's Manifesto, the Libertarian Manifesto, it's a very interesting book. But and it, for it, it, uh, you, you sure. have to show, you have to show, you don't have to show a picture to prove that you are what you are. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's. Sure, I have one question for you, Antonio. Another very interesting and uh, exciting question for you, honest and exciting. You said that uh, intermediaries are prone to corruption, right? But your company is an intermediary, actually, Netopia Payments. Yeah. Uh, how and what are you doing towards decentralizing it? What we are doing yes. towards decentralizing? Yes. Well, well, <laughs> well. First thing, first thing, when I say corruption, don't get me like, don't get me wrong. It's not like political. I mean, like corruption means, you know, something can go south. Uh, the system, security breach, technical, uh, right. technical problem, you name it. It can be anything like a guy that goes postal here and he smashes the servers. I don't know, stuff like that. You know, this is corruption is a very general word. Right. What we, we, we do what we do in the system that was created to do what we do. <laughs> okay. We, are, we have regulations, we have uh, uh, industry standards and so forth that we have to comply with every single day. So, but again, there is a third party that is verifying that we are doing our job, right? Now, in terms of moving to the blockchain, unfortunately, at this level of integration with this third party provider, banks, uh, payment schemes, merchant and so forth, is a little bit complicated to impose a decentralized system. You understand? Because we are the small wheel in the machine, not the big one, okay? Therefore, a little bit complicated. This is why we said, this is the business that it gave us success, but in order to accomplish our mission, we have to start something new. This is why we do with the crypto exchange and we invest in companies that are doing blockchain technology and so forth. It's a total different thing. This is, you, you, it's impossible to change what we are doing right now in terms of fundamental change it's, it's impossible because it's not we are not the owners of this right so i wanted to uh, uh, ask a question uh, uh, to actually ask our uh, listeners on clubhouse right now if they want to ask us anything uh, for the best question we're gonna give away the uh, libertarian manifesto uh, the book 
uh, to them. So if there's anyone that wants to come up on stage, please do. I see someone. Okay. Come in. Um, is it here? Yeah. Hello. Um, my name is Pretty Pearl. Let's say I'm. Fortunately, you're breaking up. So we have uh, someone asking us a question, but it's it's breaking up. Talk. Um, okay. Let's say we on the beginning of the net, we try to solve basically the same problem. Uh, for instance, for yes, as he. Uh, we have this concept of private key and public key. Do we, we solve this problem yeah, when we connect to the server. The same, the, the same problem we have, let's say, with the, let's say, website where we invent a certificate. Uh, this certificate, it's again, it's a really complex uh, workflow where we have uh, 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 again, a certificate. We go to the authority to sign. Right. Right. We delegate. But finally, delegate. from the yeah, from the from the user perspective, it just sees the green in front of the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's fine. The, okay. the, the site okay. is fine. It's proof. It's, it has an identity. It's automatically done by by the browser. Uh, the same the same concept we have with the digital signature. Basically, we pay taxes and sign if each in, in each month. Each doctor sign and says it's the same concept. Yeah, it's proof. It is that. What is your question, please, Patrika? My question is basically from the from the. Um, I mean, I just want to give this uh, this technical perspective. The money now is just a now is just a number somewhere. Right. In a, in a right. square. Right. Exactly. In it's a digital. Square. And the wallet, in the, your wallet, basically, it's the same concept of the public and private key. It's it's your identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what is your I, question, please? Yes. I mean, uh, I don't have a question. <laughs> okay. I mean, there is somebody that... Uh, okay, Patrika, thank you, because we are right now live also on Facebook and YouTube, and you are, can't be heard there, so that's why... I was trying to get some questions for Antonio or myself, and I see that we have Ciprian right now. Thank you very much, Petrika. We have Ciprian live right now. Maybe he wants to ask a question, actually. <laughs> Quickly, please, Ciprian. I always okay. have questions. Hi, guys. <clears throat> I, have a, uh, I have a sort of a macroeconomics question. Um, uh, what's your view on the relationship between cryptocurrencies um, and... Um, um, inflation uh, in particular. So how do you see in the next, you know, 5, 10, 20 years, uh, the relationship between hard money, let's call money, let's say, you know, dollar or other that, That's of... soft, sorry, just, <laughs> you haven't been here from the start, but okay. <laughs> and and uh, uh, and macroeconomics, uh, you know, let's just pick inflation, but we can pick other uh, indicators as well. Inflation um, of crypto or inflation of fiat? Uh, inflation in general, so in from the... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I would like to rephrase the question. Thank you, Ciprian, for the question. So what's the link between crypto, cryptocurrencies, and uh, fiat inflation? Uh, and there uh, I would like to uh, try to answer the question myself, and also I would like to ask Antonio this. Um, so the cryptocurrencies, as we mentioned earlier, uh, especially in uh, Bitcoin, but some other cryptocurrencies too, have a hard cap. And that makes, makes the cryptocurrency hard money. Uh, what makes them sound money, we just uh, said earlier, is because they are, uh, can be used anywhere in the world, they are uh, divisible, and they also withstand the passage of time. The one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin today, one Bitcoin is from 10 years from now or 10 years before, it's still going to be one Bitcoin, uh, as opposed to fiat, which is inflationary by default. I don't know of any fiat that is, uh, has a hard cap. So I think that quickly answers your question from my point of view. If you compare something that is scarce with something or limited, with something that is abundant and at the will of a central authority can be increased 
which is actually what happens today with the US dollars, for instance, then you will see that we have a problem in one point and in the other we don't. Antonio, what's your take on Ciprian's question, please? So, well, I, I <laughs> there, is and no, inflation. there is no, uh, there is no uh, fiat that is not inflationist. There exactly. There is not. So I think that that's the easiest answer, right? So the the bigger the inflation, the higher the gap between um, any crypto and in particular the Bitcoin and any fiat. Okay. So year, for example, year to year uh, increase in the value for Bitcoin is some something like nine hundred percent, something like that. If I'm not wrong maybe should uh let's see uh no one one uh, no year to date it's 100 percent uh from the beginning of <laughs> 2000 of the, yeah <laughs> it's like yeah it, at the beginning was zero value now it's whatever uh, it is right now so the inflation is only m going to make things worse for the fiat now just one little small thing um so the total value market capitalization of the bitcoin is 1.2 uh, trillion 1.2 trillion dollars right and the u.s government just printed out of thin air 1.9 trillion dollars that they gave away to people the stimulus package. The stimulus package. So they created more value than this thing, right? Based on what? And if you understood a little, at least partially what we are we're talking here, then ask yourself the question and try to figure out the answer. How come the US government, and not only the US government, but the European Central Bank and so forth, made 1.9 trillion in something that will have to match some sort of a value on the opposite line, which is a services of product or products. Uh, this is the worst times ever. And uh, one more and one more minor thing is, the 70 percent of the uh, of the value of um, the, the 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 mass the total mass of uh, dollars printed uh, from the beginning of the dollar till today were printed in the last 10 years 70 percent of them were printed in the last 10 years. That sounds comforting. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Nothing can go wrong now. <laughs> and if this doesn't look wrong to you, then... I think Ciprian got his answer, right? <laughs> so we have time to, one, to take one more question and we have to wrap it up soon. So uh, maybe Ciprian, now that you are uh, uh, more... Uh, clear on what's the difference between crypto and the link between crypto and the... Yeah, we have Gabriel now. So let's see what Gabriel has to ask. Hi, guys. Um, I have only one question. So that it's relevant. The blockchain technology stack behind the, uh, behind the, crypt, uh, the, the Bitcoin and maybe other coins like this uh, should be on Python, Java, but on the front end, it can be also React or I don't know. Uh, I'm a tech guy also. <laughs> I follow you guys, but um, sometimes I get lost in the details like this. So uh, my question is the technology stack, which one should be as in well, as <laughs> be the best, the worst or something like that? I have to thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. I have to disappoint you, but uh, this, this is not actually a tech talk. 
this is more like a money talk or a Bitcoin in terms of money. So I would say that uh, in terms of user experience, the blockchain still has a lot to improve, a lot of room to improve. Uh, in terms of what stack, what tech stack you should choose, choose whatever suits you and your knowledge. I think you just mentioned some of the things that you may be able to use. I don't know what you are using it for. Maybe you can build something on your own. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. However, Antonio and I are here today to just, let's say, explain a bit what's, uh, what's with Bitcoin in terms of money, how sound Bitcoin is, how hard, what's hard money, because I hear a lot of people asking, especially in the um, high ranking positions in government and so on, uh, saying that hard money, it's fiat money. And that's one thing that you should at least consider questioning after today's talk. Is it so? Is it really hard money when we have, as Antonio just mentioned, 70% uh, uh, of the US dollar just printed in the last 10 years? How hard is it? How sound is it? How can, much can we rely on one dollar now being the same dollar 10 years from now? Not that much, right? So Antonio, do you have any final words of wisdom for our uh, listeners today? Challenge everything. Challenge just everything. Challenge <laughs> everything. Just, just look, well, we take another. Uh, but challenge everything. It's, it's, it's about understanding. It's about an opportunity once in a lifetime. It's, you don't want to miss that, right? You just don't want to miss that. If you are comfortable and you say, okay, I'm rich, I have nothing to worry about, my, my world is perfect, everything is fine. I'm in debt, but I'm happy. Any problems, right. then don't do it. Just uh, enjoy your uh, whatever Retreat. private duck <laughs> and uh, your margarita on the sun every day uh, without working for you and your family. That's good. Please tell me how you did it so I can do it the same. But on the other hand, if you have doubts, if you want to understand, if you want to, you know, start being different, then uh, go and search, ask questions. So and I see that we have a last question from Alexandra. So actually, yeah, I would like to ask her what's what's up. Hello, hello, everybody. I joined a bit too late, so maybe this question was already uh, tackled. Um, I was just wondering what is your biggest fear about uh, Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies in general? I think uh, with this, Alexandra, Alexandra just asked that uh, what is the biggest fear uh, in terms of uh, blockchain and Bitcoin in particular? And I think biggest our biggest fears. Yeah. <laughs> so not in general, our biggest fears. OK, no. that's yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that's an awesome question either way. Um, and I think you just won the book, <laughs> the wow. Libertarian Manifesto of uh, Rothbard. Um, so my biggest fear in, uh, is uh, related to consensus. I think uh, the Bitcoin core right now has just a handful of developers that might somehow be able to propose or to change at its core, the technology that is uh, running on, uh, on the blockchain technology that Bitcoin is running on top of. So my major concern regarding Bitcoin is that at some point, like we were very close a few years back in 2017, if I'm correct, there might be a major screw up because of the very few people that are able to modify and control the code nowadays. Antonio? I um, honestly, I don't have any fears whatsoever. <laughs> and I'll tell on. you why, because, because, you know, it's, it's, it's so crazy open and uh, participative and revolutionary and, you know, future proof then you, you, you cannot be afraid. The only thing that someone can be afraid is the, the, that will be major changes. 
But for me, it's not because I don't fear the change. I embrace the change. Well, the same for me. So, Antonio, you said it perfectly and I fully agree with you. I am also the kind of person that fully embraces the change. And I think that's the right state of mind uh, to be in when you're tackling new technologies and talking about uh, adoption of uh, of new innovations so uh, i would like to wrap it up now thank you for joining me today antonio thank you for this amazing audience and for all of your questions um shout out to felix uh, and to netopia payments for sponsoring this first show and uh, just to remind you it's going to be bi-weekly so we're gonna see and hear each other every couple of weeks with uh, interesting guests, uh, such as uh, we had Antonio today, talking about blockchain and maybe from a different perspective than technical or uh, speculative. So I'm looking forward to uh, hosting new shows on blockchain soon, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all Uh, here on stage or listening or viewing or listening to the podcast later on. Thank you. I'm grateful for for this uh, audience. I'm happy to have had Antonio here. And Antonio, now are the, <laughs> it's the moment to say the last uh, words for the show. Um, I thank you first. And uh, I, I hope... Uh, I, I hope you, when you when you pe press leave quietly, uh, you will uh, start wondering and you start searching. And uh, I hope to see you uh, discuss in 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 a discussion in discuss in discussing with us and discussing with some other people about this beautiful technology and whatever the future is going to bring us right so i'm here i'm i'm doing my thing i'm doing my thing with a, a team of wonderful people if you want to join let me know uh i would be more than happy to to shake hands with everyone and then and, and do amazing things but Before everything, I want to thank you for for uh, staying so long. And uh, anyway, thank you. That's it. <laughs> It's much simple. Have an amazing weekend. Thank you for joining and tune back in a couple of weeks from now. Cheers.